Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This week's vlog, I'm heading out for my longest run since my ultra uh, six weeks ago. And it is gonna be around 15 to 16 kilometers in a beautiful place just south of Bristol called Chu Valley. And we're doing a little loop around there. I've done a little section of it before, but not this specific route that we're doing. So I'm super excited to give that a go. And I'm running with a friend. We're gonna be taking it super easy. It is trails, which is technically not what my physio said that I should be doing, or actually kind of exactly what he said I shouldn't be doing. But because it's so flat, it's not not like rocky it's not super loose underfoot it's just a nice river path by the lake it's gonna be really flat and hopefully kind of a nice way of easing my body back into trail running unlike the southwest coast path which i did run earlier this week along the way i'm gonna be talking about ways of getting into trail running i know a lot of you guys who follow me might not be specifically trail runners you might be road runners or you just run as for fun and you might think that maybe trail running isn't for you or it's too intimidating or maybe you just haven't given it a go yet for whatever reason. I think trail running regardless of whether you actually want to do it as your sport is a great thing to have in your arsenal of kind of exercises as a way of just keeping motivated, keeping things varied and also getting stronger as well because it really is very good for different muscles to what you work when you are just doing road running. So I'm going to talk about kind of um, ways of getting into trail running and uh, how, how it can benefit you as well. Also this week's vlog is sponsored by Kamut, which is perfect timing because Kamut are a great app and website where you can find different trails. And one thing I get asked all the time is like, how do you find the trails that you go on? And the answer is Kamut. So whether I'm going to a new place or just looking for new trails when I'm in training for a particular event around where I live, I can just type in whichever parameters I want and I can find a trail near me. And there are some real hidden gems. It's almost like wherever you go, you can find things that previously only the locals would have known about. And Kamut has been recommended to me for years, but I only started using it earlier this year and I have no idea why I didn't start using it before. It has all the features you could possibly want and not everything is a loop as well. You can say like, I wanna go from A to B, which is something that I found that not very many other apps and websites do. So you can say, I wanna go from my car here to a restaurant there or a pub or a cafe or a particular viewpoint or my friend's house or whatever. And it will come up with a route and then give you loads of information about that route if you haven't tried it, I would thoroughly recommend checking out. I'll put a link down below. So thank you to Kamut for sponsoring this video. Definitely recommend you guys go check it out. So it's just before 9 a.m. and I'm gonna be heading out at nine, but first I'm gonna have some breakfast. Hello, so we are off out on our run at the moment. I'm here with David, say hi. hi. Um, he has chosen today's route. We're going around, not around Chew Valley, we're starting at Chew Valley Lake, uh, which is just south of Bristol and then doing a little loop. Um, full distance TBC, we'll both see how we feel. Um, there's also Valley Fest going on at the moment, so we sort of accidentally gate crashed a, uh, a little food and drink festival, which is very tempting to just pop in there and spend the whole run just sitting down eating and drinking, but I guess we better get in a bit of a run first. So today's run is nice and easy. Um, as I mentioned last time, I'm, I'm a little bit injured at the moment and burned from doing technical trails, anything too hilly. So hence starting at the lake because lakes in general and lake paths are quite flat. Um, I want to share some sort of beginner trail running tips or tips to help get you into trail running or better at trail running. Um, because I get asked this question a lot and I think it can seem really intimidating at first. Even if you've done little bits of trail here and there, you feel like you've got to be a special sort of person or run in a special sort of way to do trails. And I want to share you my top tips. Oh, so beautiful. Woo. Plus, Gorgeous, good route finding. Oh, 
So my first tip is to get the right gear. So you might be able to start doing trail running uh, just in your road shoes and your road gear because for the most part it's much the same, especially in summer. Um, if you have any nice flat trails near you, chances are they'll be absolutely fine in your road shoes. But as you start doing more hilly stuff um, and start running in winter, which hopefully you will be doing because you're going to love it so much, um, and start doing things that are on a little bit more uneven terrain, it's really, really useful to get a pair of trail shoes. Um, and they have better grip on the bottom. Come on, let's see the trail shoes. Yeah, look, huge grip. If you can invest in a pair of those, they should last you a decent amount of time. And they will just mean that you can trust your feet a lot better. When you put your foot down on a slippery slope and you're wearing road shoes, it's practically like wearing ice skates. And it can be really disconcerting. Whereas when you put on the right pair of shoes, you get to actually trust your feet and it can be a lot more fun. Oh, it's a lot more fun because you can actually just focus on the running and the surroundings and enjoying yourself rather than focusing just on not falling over. I can't promise you that you won't still fall over, but at least it'll be less likely and it'll be a lot more comfortable. Um, and as for running vests like this, um, they are super useful. You probably won't need them until you start doing longer stuff. But to be honest, I've really enjoyed having one, uh, just put my keys, my card, my phone, phone charger for longer runs, and now water as well, especially in summer, in it. And then also means that you get used to running in one of these. So when you actually get around to doing races, um, you feel prepared and you're not actually just trying out new kit on the day. Um, I've done a vlog recently that should help on all of my favorite running gear. And if you wanna know what my favorite stuff is, go and check out that vlog. Obviously everyone's a little bit different, so what works for me might not work for you. But check out the comments as well, because some people left their favorite recommendations in the comments. So you can try out different stuff. Okay, the second tip is to find some awesome trails like this. David found this one on Kamut and it's so useful because it can be really difficult to know like where nice trails near you are unless you just explore loads and get lost loads which is personally what I do. <laughs> um, but to find new trails can be super useful. You can type in the parameters that you want like I want a run of this many hours or this many kilometers. I want it to be easy, medium, difficult. Um, I want the terrain to be like this. I want it to be in this area and it comes up with so many suggestions and that's how we found this one. Really impressed with it so far, it's so beautiful. Um, so yeah, definitely check out that. And it can be really useful because you can stick uh, stick the route on your watch or just have it on your phone. And in doing that, you know that you're not gonna get lost or if you do get lost, you can find your way back. And like when I first started trail running, one thing that would stop me going further was fear of getting lost. And now I love it. As you guys know, if you watch this channel a lot, I get lost all the time. But having, having the backup on my phone on my watch is super useful so I don't panic about it. My third tip is to not worry about times or paces or whatever. The reason that I do all of my long runs by time on feet is because that accounts for all that trails can throw at you, which is quite a lot. Oh my God, look at that. So pretty. So when you're heading out for a road run, you can kind of estimate what like a comfortable pace is and you can estimate what a difficult pace is going to be, a 5k pace, 10k half marathon, marathon pace, etc. When you head out on the trails, it's kind of difficult. Some of it is unrunnable, especially in winter. Some of it is going to be really steep. Some of it is going to be flat, but really difficult underfoot. So you're going to be a lot slower. One way to stop yourself stressing about all of that is by not allowing yourself either to record it or to look at your watch as you record and um, just going out for time on feet. And that's my personal favorite way of doing things because you still get used to running for, you know, two, three, three and a half hours, but you don't have to worry about how far you went in that time because you're used to spending that amount of time on feet. And that's really important when it comes to ultra marathons and races like that. Look at this. So beautiful. Ah! On field. Ah. Ooh. This is a fun field adventure. Fun field, fun field. Get it? Uh. Oh my God, so sorry. It's the runner's high speaking, not me. 
I've done this a little bit before. It's so nice to be able to connect up uh, routes that I've done and enjoyed. I mean, look how beautiful it is. I did this in winter, it was much less beautiful. So we've just discovered over there is Stanton and Drew Circles and what? Cove. Cove. Older than Stonehenge. Older than Stonehenge. There's something that you wouldn't have found usually on most of my runs. Um, but on Komoot it shows you like particular viewpoints or points of interest, including pubs obviously, uh, that you pass along the way and this is one of them. So very cool to be able to see it. I've run past here before but never knew that was there because it's kind of just behind this little hedge here and um, now I can see it, it's very cool. My next tip is one recommended by David and I totally wholeheartedly agree with it, which is your training runs are not a race. You should not be racing every single one. And the great thing about trail running is that it tends to be in beautiful places. So you should stop and enjoy the sights. We take a myriad of pictures, videos, all that kind of stuff. Oh my God, I love stop this cycling cafe. I mean, <laughs> it's so cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> if cyclists can do it, why can't we? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, trail running is to be enjoyed. It is not a race. It is a really fun day out. And um, if you want to be enjoying it and getting into trail running, the best way you can do that is to make it fun. And for me, one of the reasons I love trail running is because you get to go to really cool places that if you wanted to stick to roads or flat runs, you wouldn't otherwise be able to get to. And so, yeah, that's tip number four. Stop, enjoy the sights. It's not a race, just have fun. Excuse me, thank you. Come on, on this way. My next step is more relevant to <coughs> ultra running than just trail running specifically, but get used to switching from running to walking and back to running is the most efficient way to do some hills while you're out and about. But a lot of people say that once they start walking, they really struggle to start running again. And I completely get that. But when you start doing longer distance runs, it's invaluable to have power walking in your arsenal of uh, tools to get through a run as quickly and efficiently as possible. So practicing hiking hills as fast as you can and then running when you get to the top is a really good way of learning to run long distances more efficiently. And it does take time and you do have to get used to it. I listened to a great podcast um, called The Science of Ultra and they had a whole episode on hiking and why it is so useful to ultra runners. Um, so I thoroughly recommend giving that a listen if you're still a little bit like, oh, but just walking is just taking a walking break when you're running. You. Um, because it is absolutely, I mean, it can be, but not necessarily. So if you want to learn more about that and how you can get better at power hiking and walking and then running again in ultras and long distance trail runs, go give that a listen. tip other than the usual have fun is to um, always follow the countryside code there are certain things that you would not think about if you are used to running on roads that are very important to think about when you are out on the trails things such as sticking to public footpaths not running across crops I mean may, all of this may sound like common sense but it can be difficult when you're out and about to know what's what and knowing your route in advance can really help with that um, things like shutting gates if you have a dog, keep your dog on lead in places that might have livestock, especially sheep and uh, also cattle. I just saw a cow try and go for a dog. So um, things like that you might not think about when you're out and about running on the roads. When you're on the trails, it's really important. Shutting gates is like the number one rule. If you hold it open for someone, make sure that one of you shuts it afterwards. Also, as you head out for longer runs, obviously you're going to be taking food with you. Um, if you're not, I would recommend that you do and there's lots of wrappers involved with that do not leave your wrappers anywhere i tend to avoid this by just avoiding wrappers altogether i use things like nuru and lucho dietos that don't involve any form of plastic wrapper they just have either biodegradable 
or no wrapper at all. Don't throw your wrappers on the side. If you do, if you drop them on a route, go back, pick them up. Um, we're privileged to be able to use these trails and keeping them clean and nice and safe for other users is so, so important and something I feel very strongly about because there's nothing worse than going somewhere really beautiful and just seeing litter strewn everywhere. Hi babies! Hello! Hot day oh, today. Oh, oh my god, I know. Sorry, I don't mean to disturb you. Hi! Very British scene going on here. We have a telephone box, some UK flags, nice rowan tree. <laughs> it's like the epitome of being in the UK here, other than the sunshine, <laughs> which is definitely not. I think these berries are about the same colour as my face. It's very warm. So we've done nine and a half K so far taking it really nice and steady and um, making sure that we don't aggravate any injuries anymore. Little bit left to go. Hi, little and big. You are very cute. Hi. Oh, the flies, they must be a nightmare. Oh, is that a good scratch? Yes, it is. <laughs> Nearly done with our run. Uh, just a few kilometers to go. It's felt pretty good so far. We have been taking it nice and easy. Um, well, every time I stop or walk, I can feel my tendons are kind of stiffening up it's weird they're not actually painful they're just super duper stiff so I'm hoping that with a little bit of ice after this that they'll the swelling will go down um, but in terms of pain when I run they're pretty good so there is Chew Valley Lake so just the last little bit and it's nicely flat or downhill from here You are beautiful. Please don't run me over. Hello. Hiya. God, I'm always scared of these. I feel like they could hit me with their necks. Ooh, so interested. As I run the last kilometre stretch of today's trail, I'm gonna sign off. That is it for this week's vlog. Thank you so much for watching. We have finished off in a really, really beautiful river trail. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I'll be back very soon with some cool content from Scotland and the Lake District, where I'm heading off on holiday slash exploring the trails with the dog, doing a bit of wild camping, going to a bothy, staying near some really beautiful lakes, and there'll be plenty of content coming away from that. That is it for this week. Thanks again for watching. Bye. <laughs>